Welcome back to the channel. I'm Gary and the channel is called Clueless Reacts. So today I'm going to have a look at uh, territories in India, states, etc, etc, etc. So again, completely clueless. Um, I know where the main cities uh, are uh, and even some of the states. Uh, so I'm going to have a little delve in to see what they can teach me today. This is geography lesson number two for Clueless. Cetera, it's a geography quiz game. We'll get back to it later. But first, as you guys know, this is a filler week video. And by popular request, we are doing the states of India. Now, the thing about India is that it's actually kind of broken up quite a few times since independence from the original 14 states, mostly because of the people groups or the languages, stuff like that. So before we get into this, just keep in mind, I am not Indian. I have never even been to India. So in order to make this video, I had to talk to a lot of you guys. I've read a lot of your emails and comments, and I compiled as much information as I possibly could based Based off of what you guys, the Indian jogger peeps, have said, so kind of, you know, if I get anything wrong, it's, you know. Yeah, that's a bit weird though. I mean, uh, if I expect to get information on a country, um, good information, I expect it to be done by a guy of that country, not some guy who's getting third-hand information. So this could be right a lot of nonsense, you know? I mean, it depends on what people are feeding him, if he cross-checks it, if not, it could just be a waste of time. Well, let's have a look. So let's just jump into it. The 29 states and the seven union territories. Andhra Pradesh, the capital of Maravati. Now this is an interesting state because it kind of has like the fastest growing GDP in all of India, over 16% in the past. Is this where Chennai is? Here they speak Telugu and this guy wrote this play, which is kind of considered like the most prominent Telugu play in all of Indian history. Otherwise they're famous for the Kuchipudi dance, one of the eight classical styles of Indian dance. And uh, yeah, they have great beaches and caves. Arunachal Pradesh, capital Itangar. This is the region that's kind of disputed with China, although it is administered by India. In order to get in as a foreigner, you will need a restricted area permit. Otherwise, culturally, it kind of takes cues from Tibet, you know, the whole like Buddhism thing going on. There's quite a few Buddhists here. People here are super friendly. They're famous for their wood carvings and their carpets. Assam, capital Dispur. Now, if you watch the India episode, you'll know that I talked about the Seven Sisters in Northeast India. Assam is kind of like the big sister. This place is known for disputably having the nicest tea and silk. And the silks are kind of made based off of what they actually feed the silkworms. It's interesting. They're also known for preserving the incredibly rare one-horned Indian rhinoceros. And uh, the longest bridge opened up in 2017 over here as well. Assam. It's awesome. Bihar. Capital Patna. This is kind of like the Buddha state. Lots of famous sites for Buddhism. Supposedly they have the Bodhi tree that Siddhartha Gautama sat under. Otherwise on the Hindu side I was told that they're very big on Ram and Krishna. I was also told that they're very hardworking people. Chhattisgarh, Capital Naya Raipur. From what I was told this is kind of like a somewhat militant-ish type of area. They're known for producing a lot of coal and they are kind of one of the poorest states and there is a noticeable community of people that kind of have Maoist slash Naxal ideologies and it kind of clashes with the main Indian government but otherwise generally the people here are just nice but there's just a little bit of controversy that's all. Goa. This is the Vegas of India. It was a former Portuguese colony and uh, now it's known for having a ton of Russian tourists that just flock over and take over everything. Great beaches, bars, and cool things happen but the funny thing is the people in Goa, like the actual citizens, are pretty chill and normal. It's just the tourists that give it the crazy vibe. But yeah, Goa, it's like where everybody wants to go to for a vacation. You want to go, uh, to Goa. Gujarat, mm. capital Gandhinagar. No, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is from here. Now this place is famous for a few things. First of all, it's kind of like a desert and they have one of the largest salt deserts in the world. They have this forest which has the last of the Asiatic lions in the world. Oh, I forgot Gandhi was also from here. They are voted the number one okay, forget Gandhi. business state in India. The people are very good at doing business and they're really good at trading. Also, no alcohol is allowed in this state, but that's okay because they go to one of the union territories that we'll talk about later. But yeah, basically, uh, people that can handle money really well come from Gujarat. Haryana, capital. Unless you're white, of course, and you have white privilege. See, I could go to Gujarat with a little ticket and say I can get, uh, get alcohol at a little shop. Um, ask anybody who doesn't live in Gujarat, coming from another state, can get uh, alcohol there. So, yeah, there you go. 
capital of Chandigarh, which is shared with Punjab. Long story. Haryana, I was told, is kind of like the rougher, tougher brother of Punjab. It's known as like the wrestling and boxing capital of India. And they have one of the highest male to female sex ratios, like there's more men than women. And this place is famous for having a lot of people that are hired to become bodyguards for other people in other states. Like this is the bodyguard state. Himachal Pradesh, which has two capitals, the summer one, Shimla, and the winter one, Dharamshala. This is kind of known as the state that hosts the Dalai Lama. But it's actually kind of known as like the beautiful holiday destination that Indians love to visit. It's known as the abode of snow, one of the snowiest places in all of India. Culture-wise, again, they take a lot of cues from their Tibetan neighbors up north. But yeah, uh, cool state, lots of culture, lots of beautiful landscape, and uh, people like to visit for uh, vacations. Jammu and Kashmir also has two capitals, the summer one, Srinagar, and the winter one, Jammu. I have to be very, very careful with this one. Why? Because if you watch the India episode, you'll know that Pakistan and China and India are all kind of vying for ownership of this one area. Basically, the area that is kind of operated by India, we'll talk about. Besides Lakshadweep, it has the highest percentage of Muslims in all of India at about 68%. It used to be ruled under these princely states. And it's funny because, like, the people here are so nice and welcoming, even though they've gone through, like, multiple wars. Yeah, it's like the world's most beautiful conflict zone. Jharkhand, the capital, Ranchi. It's kind of like uh, the sibling of Chhattisgarh. A lot of the people here kind of also have the same Maoist ideology. However, it also does have one of the holiest sites in Jainism. Well, how do you pronounce it? The Shikharji, known for having a lot of minerals that they mine, and uh, famous cricketer Doni came from here as well. Karnataka, capital Bengaluru, formerly known as Bangalore. The capital, Bengaluru, is kind of known as like the Silicon Valley of India. So many IT companies and startups are coming out in this city, and they have the lowest unemployment rate in all of India at less than 1%. Otherwise, they're known for having the Hampi ruins, and hmm. they speak Kannada, or I, is that how you pronounce it? I was told it's pronounced Kanada. Kannada, but some people have said Kannada. Canada, like no, Kerala. Kerala, capital Tiruvananthapuram. Say that three times fast. Tiruvananthapuram. Tiruvananthapuram. This place is kind of famous for being known as the spot where Jesus' apostle Thomas kind of landed and spread the Christian gospel. And today, uh, you see kind of like a lot of Catholics and Christians, and they all kind of speak Malayalam. A little bit of a tongue twister. Say it with me. Malayalam. It's not Malayam or Malayam. It's Malayalam. Backwater is a very famous place. And yeah, Kerala is kind of like the state that's like doing pretty well overall in a lot of things like literacy and HDI and all that other stuff. All the other states are like, hmm, maybe we can kind of take pointers from Kerala. Madhya Pradesh, capital Bhopal, the heart of India, the history state with tons of religious and historical sites. You have the Bimbedka rock shelters. You have the uh, Kajuraho temples, which kind of depicts all those, uh, you know, Kama Sutra sexually explicit images going on. A lot of you have told me to mention the Bhopal gas tragedy that happened in 1984 and I was also told that the people here seem to be really big devotees of Ganesh. Maharashtra, capital Mumbai. This is the richest state and the second most populous, third largest in area. It's kind of like the New York and Los Angeles of India. It's like the economic hub and the entertainment hub. Bollywood is over here. Tons of people flock over to pursue their dreams. I mean, aside from all that though, they do have a lot of like Marathi forts and like historical sites as well. But yeah, Maharashtra is kind of like the central nucleus that everything kind of builds off of. This guy's too fast. You know, if I'm going to get 28 states, etc., in 60 minutes, that's no time. It's less than a, uh, you know, you've got about 40 seconds per state. Uh, that's no way to give information. If this is the case, you should have broken into two videos uh, and done part one and part two. Um, this is just information that he's got from somebody else. So a third party information. Doesn't really bear with me. And expands outwards from. It pushes India forward. Manipur, capital Impa. This is one of the seven sister states. A lot of the people here, just like all the other seven sisters, have a little bit more of like an East Asian look to them. They're known for having their own distinct hill tribes. Five-time world amateur boxing champion Mary Kong came from here. They're also known for having these cool floating islands. Floating islands and boxing women. Meghalaya, capital Shillong. This place is known as the abode of rain, and they're kind of like the water people of India. These two villages get the most rain in all of India. They have really interesting metro lineal tribes and they have really cool foggy hills but yeah cool hill people with their own customs and uh the water people mizoram capital Izal, the land of blue mountains this is the most
most forested state in all of India at over 90%. Pretty eco-friendly. They even have eco-tours. It's kind of like the Costa Rica of India. The people here are just really chill and they just kind of like sell their handicrafts at the market. All right, so that's the halfway point. Just very quickly before we move on to the next one, just want to say thank you to Cetera, our sponsor for this video. Cetera is a really cool geography learning game that you can actually yeah, download crap like this. Android this is iOS. This is wrong. We should be doing this at the or end or at the beginning so we can, we can work it out. I don't agree with um, advertising in the middle of a, middle of a, a presentation. This is just crap. And they actually made a Geography Now game. Not only that, but the game also comes in 34 different languages. It's really fun. I totally yeah, recommend it. Yeah, it's really interesting. But at the end, please, so we can edit this out. Nagaland, capital Kohima. This is like the most Christian state of India, but they also still kind of retain their own indigenous tribal cultures and customs. Famous for the Hornbill Festival. And it's funny because, like, they're very westernized, but they know that the tourists come in, and so they kind of have to, like, put on their traditional costumes and put on a show. But it's like, hey, eh, whatever, eh, whatever makes us money. Odisha, formerly known as Orissa. Kapha, known as the Land of Cyclones. It's also known for being like the ISR. Yeah, I find this guy quite boring, actually. Satellite programs. This is one of the three it's not, states uh, that never broke not remotely interesting. It's not really keeping my interest. History. It's kind of known as like the state that... He's got no feeling. He's just reading south. off lines or, or memorized things. He's got no information himself. He's just... Just going, just going on and on. Uh, fox, 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 fox without anything else, um, and he's actually no idea what he's talking about. He's on his own mission, he's never been to India. It's like me giving you um, a, a tour in India. I mean, how the hell can I do I don't know what the hell's going on, and this guy doesn't either. I think he's really poor. I'll definitely give him a thumbs down. And they got shared with Haryana. Keep in mind, this is only part of the larger Punjab territory, which is also shared with Pakistan. A lot of you guys had stuff to say about Punjab. Overall, a lot of you said that Punjab is probably the most loved state in India, partially thanks to Bollywood. They got really good food, really nice people. They have the largest Sikh community in all of India. They also have the holiest site in Sikhism, the Golden Temple. And there's a ton of forts and palaces like this one. Rajasthan, capital Jaipur, the land of Raja or kings. It's the largest state in area at 341 square kilometers. It is also one of the states that never broke up and there are just endless forts and palaces found in this state. It has things like a camel fair. Supposedly I was told they have like the best henna artists. Keep in mind food wise they keep things very spicy and it is at about 75% of the population the most vegetarian state in India. Vegetarian kings in the sand. Sikkim. Capital Gangtok. Now this is an interesting one because it kind of joined India in 1975 to kind of avoid the Chinese. It used to be its own kingdom and these people are very similar to the people of Bhutan. They can kind of generally understand each other's languages. Lots of uh, Tibetan Buddhist type of culture going on here as well. And it is as of right now the most environmentally friendly state in all of India. It is almost completely organic. As in they don't believe in using chemicals or pesticides in their agriculture. Very clean air. They love nature and they love of, uh, they're just it's, it's kind of like the Bhutan of India Tamil Nadu capital Chennai now if you want real like South Dravidian Indian culture you come here this is like straight up the all this guy's doing is, is reading off one one statement stopping different camera angle one statement stopping different camera angle he's not uh, he's got no knowledge of this he's just reading off a script this is really poor I'm really not impressed with this guy at all functioning Hindu temple in the world. Technically Angkor Wat is a bigger Hindu temple but it's no longer active so it kind of doesn't count. Uh, I was told they are big fans of... See, I was told, I was told, I was told, I was told you know, this is... Hyderabad, the youngest state of India. They literally split up from Andhra Pradesh in 2014. I was told it's kind of like the whole, you know, Catalina Spain thing where they're like, hey, we're making a lot of money but you guys are dragging us down so we're going to kind of split off and make our own thing. And then Andhra Pradesh was like, no, you can't do that. And they're like, yes, we can. And we're going to take Hyderabad. They're like, no, you can't do that. And like, yes, we can. Make your own capital. Yeah, messy divorce. Anyway, they're also famous for Tollywood or Telugu Hollywood. And it's interesting because they still kind of retain a little bit of the Persian culture that was brought over from the Mughals and Nizams. 
You can find it in things like the painting and their shadow puppets. Tripura, capital Agartala. I was told, is this even India? It's like the state that very few people even know much about. It's like all sides of their state are surrounded by Bangladesh. So no shocker, they have a lot of Bangladeshi immigrants. Uh, apparently I was told they like to play horse polo. But yeah, uh, I think out of all the states, uh, they are kind of like the biggest anomaly. It's just like the mystery state. People probably come here to hide out and avoid the authorities when they're on the loose. <laughs> I don't know. Uttar Pradesh, capital Lucknow. This is the Taj Mahal state. And it's kind of like a, oh dang, where did that baby boom come from? You guys just like exploded in population in the past few years. And now it is the most populous state. It's also home to Varanasi, one of the most famous cities in the world for Hinduism, Jains, and Buddhists. And uh, yeah, a lot of fertile land over here. Lots of spices and agriculture happen in this state. Very key important player in all of India. You cannot have India without Uttar Pradesh. Uttarakhand, capital Dehradun. This place actually has some of the holiest sites in all of Hinduism. It has the Jim Corbett National Park, beautiful mountains. Again, I was told these people are super nice, very welcoming. And I was specifically told to tell you guys that Urvashi Ratala is from this state. West Bengal, capital Calcutta, or Kolkata. Change the spelling. This is the last state that never broke up in all of India. Technically, if you consider the fact that it broke up from East Bengal, which became Bangladesh, but yeah. These people are kind of also known for having some of the best sweets in all of India. And they're also known for having some of the best literature and academics. Some of the greatest minds from India, like this guy came from here. They're also known for being very strong devotees to Durga. Sweets and academics, West Bengal. Now we reach the Union Territories. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands, capital Port Blair. This place is known for being home to one of the last uncontacted human tribes on Earth, the Sentinelese. You are not allowed to visit their island. It's also home to India's only volcano. Chandigarh. Now this is interesting. It's the capital of both Punjab and Haryana, but it's also a Union Territory in itself. Basically, this was a planned city that was built because they gave Lahore to Pakistan. And it was kind of made to be like a model of affordable housing in India. It's a, it's a new city. Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. There's the interesting thing. Gujarat, like I mentioned, does not allow alcohol. Maharashtra does. So where do they meet in the middle? These Union territories. These places are kind of known as like the places where both states can kind of join together and have a beer. And uh, Daman and Diu, I think it was also Portuguese, wasn't it? Yeah. Lakshadweep means a hundred islands. Basically, in a nutshell, the majority of people here are Muslim and they're very similar to the people of the Maldives. Uh, you find a lot of atolls and a lot of people living on these narrow sandbanks and they have like an island culture. The capital territory of Delhi. Keep in mind that this is a separate entity from New Delhi. But yeah, uh, this is kind of basically where all the politicians go and the worst drivers in India, I was supposedly told. And even though they are a territory, they still have their own legislative assembly. It's, a, it's weird. But yeah, busy people making laws, causing conflict controversy for the rest of the country. And finally, Puducherry, capital Pondicherry. This is the French-speaking area of India. Here you can also find Auroville, the hippie village, where all the people kind of came together and they wanted to make their own utopia. Then there was a little bit of controversy, but yeah, it's, yeah look into it. But yeah, French-speaking Indians. And that is that! Once again, thank you to you guys, all the Indian younger peeps that helped me out with this video by giving information. I hope I got most of it right. But yeah, in a nutshell, India has so many different types of people groups and languages languages and cultures and traditions and customs. It's like you can't summarize it all in one video and obviously... I can't listen to him any longer. He's, uh, he's bored me to tears. Um, I'll need to watch someone else to to get a full uh, um, view of, of the states and provinces because this guy is just giving me nothing. So, uh, I think we'll leave it there, um, with my lack of uh, inspiration from this guy. Um, if you like it, subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, uh, please help me grow the channel. Uh, it's been a lot of fun learning about India, um, and keep the comments going, I've got a lot of great comments, which is uh, it's great fun for me to respond to. Um, so, until then, next time, uh, you take care.